Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Alara. Welcome to my channel. Uh, thanks for stopping by and taking a peek. Um, just getting ready to do a new start on um, my birthday present. My husband got me this Gecko Rouge kit, Purple Unicorn by Charlie Darling. I actually got it in the 28 count um, fabric, the 28 count even weave. And I love their now. I love their kits. I love my husband. I sent him the link to my wish list, and I have it on PDF in my wish list, but I got the printed chart, so this is going to be interesting. I, I've emailed them. Hopefully, they can do the uh, PDF so I can do the pattern keeper, but if not, we'll truck along. But they package their flosses on these cards. They don't have the DMC number. No big deal at all. I have a book if I really want to match them after I'm done, if there's any left over, but love these colors, blues, purples, pinks, those are my jam. So, but I thought before I actually started, I would just show anybody who's interested how I get going on a kit or a project, I should say. Um, I use these pilot pilot friction pens and just um, I find the middle of the piece and then I measure I actually had to figure out how many inches wide and long it was since it was on the the page but uh, I find the top corner here and then I just go ahead and write out um, by tens so that I can match it up on the pages a little bit easier. Even when I'm using Pattern Keeper, it just seems to help a little bit if I've got any kind of long rows that I can, I just I don't have to really count. I just look and see where I stop on the line, if, if that makes sense. So, all right, I'm going to get set up and get started. I've got a tag that I printed out for anybody who's curious a little bit more about me. Um, so yeah, now I'll get set up and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm a little glad that was off camera because that was a little bit of a hot mess. I forgot that I wasn't working on a hade, that this wasn't full coverage, uh, and that, uh, yeah, so if you'll notice, if you noticed when I first started recording, this was 10 through whatever. Yeah, it actually starts from 10 in the middle and works its way back out. So I had to iron out my numbers, which is why I love the friction pens. Super easy. Remark it. Well, remeasure it. Remark it. Find my start spot. And here we go. I also forgot that they, um, Gekka Rouge's lengths of thread on the cards is all one continuous length. So you have to separate, make hanks. I don't know what to call it. You have to cut the threads to length before you can really start. So, um, and... I'm going to back you up just a second. This one was one of the ones I did. And I before I remembered that it was not cut as Hanks. So I took it off to straighten it up and it kind of exploded. So that was a fun hot mess to unknot. But here we go. Um, I'm usually a hoop flipper, so... This is going to be um, a little bit of a different start, actually. I'll just do an anchor. And I think I'm going to have to move my tag paper so that I can actually see it. And I really hope I am not being too loud. I'm pretty blind. <laughs> so I'm used to having my face, oops, Nikes, right up next to the fabric. So I'm actually kind of far away. From what I'm used to because I'm afraid I'm gonna like smack the camera and I don't want to shake you guys um, hoping it's bright enough I might have to turn on another light two seconds okay much better hopefully you can actually see a little bit what I'm doing. I'm a 
Hoping this isn't too much of a hot mess. Oh, I'm still smacking you, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys can see. Okay. And then I'll... Sorry, I feel like my hand is huge in the camera, which, I mean, I know it is, but I just want to make sure you guys can still see. Nope. And I got a knot already. This is working out fantastically. Oh, please. I feel like I'm channeling Amy a little bit over at Creativity by Gidge. I've been binge watching her channel lately, trying to catch up to where she's at now. So I'm not trying to copycat her, I promise. Just channeling her. How do I want to do this? I've never really stitched, stitched and chatted at the same time, so I'm going to do my best. All right, so how many countries have you been to? I have been to two. The one I grew up in, which is the U.S., and Canada. Been to Canada twice. Once when I was really young with my parents uh, as a vacation to Niagara Falls. And once when my kids were really little to go visit their dad in Toronto when he was working there. How old were you when you learned how to ride a bike? I was so young, I do not remember. Feel like I have known how to ride a bike for forever. But it's also been forever since I've ridden one. We used to, we used to, <laughs> we used to ride all over the city uh, that we grew up in. My cousin and I, um, my aunt would babysit me a lot when I was little. And I remember <laughs> one year we got lost. We rode for hours and hours. And, you know, of course, this was back before cell phones. So, and we were pretty young. I, middle, mm, late elementary, early middle school, this is you know, before parents were terrified to leave their children outside by themselves. And, and we eventually made it back home. But that was, that was a good day. <laughs> Is anyone in your family in the army? Not actively that I know of. Um, but I know like my, and I, my chair is super squeaky. So you'll probably hear it a lot as I move apologize now in advance. It, it is what it is. Um, I know my grandfather was in World War II. Um, cousins, uncles, but it wasn't really something that our family talked about as far as, um, you know, being proud to have served in the military not that they weren't proud, but I don't know. It just wasn't ever something that we talked about. I really hope you guys aren't bouncing a lot. I feel like you're shaking. I feel like I'm shaking. What's your favorite subject? Well, I'm not in school anymore. But when I was in school, science. I loved science. And when I went to college, I think chemistry was one of my favorite classes. Um, but I really wasn't bad at any, so oh, no, that's a lie. I'm terrible. When I got older at 
foreign languages. That was what stopped me in my tracks at college was having to take a foreign language class. And I was trying to take them online. And it was, uh, uh, that, yeah, that was what started my withdrawal from college before I got my degree. But that's okay. I really didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up anyway. So it was kind of a, kind of a waste of time at that point. Hmm. What song most describes your love life right now? I'm really bad at that game because the name thing, I, I don't, I can't remember names of songs. I can't remember names of people. Um, I'll get a song stuck in my head every once in a while, but I won't be able to even sing lyrics to you enough to tell you what the song is. I'll just have a melody stuck in my head and like two words over and over. It's, that's always fun when I get an earworm that decides to crawl in there and then lull me to sleep with its two word lullaby over and over and over. Is your father bald? <laughs> Partly. He's got a bald spot. But his hair started turning white when he was like 23. Really early. Salt and pepper. And then it is just stark white now. He's mid 60s. And then it's funny, my mom's side are very late grayers. Um, I just turned 42 and I only have a few gray hairs. Only children being four teenagers and a toddler tornado are very quickly changing that. But um, yeah, I was lucky enough to get her genes so far with the hair color. What is your nickname? I don't really have a nickname. Um, and I go by my screen name, Elera, but that's kind of a personal name. Nobody really, really calls me that in real life. My, my stepkids have a name for me, but it's awfully close to my first name and I'm just not ready to go there yet. So we're just going to keep that to me for now. Do you sleep with the lights off or on? Off? Plus the curtains drawn, plus the sleep mask, plus earplugs. I, if I could sleep in a sensory deprivation chamber, I probably would. Because any kind of, my, <laughs> my husband's not a loud snorer, but it's enough to keep me awake. Um, and he's always the first one to fall asleep. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's like 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock now. So I don't, my sleep's getting, my, I just, I can't sleep at night. But when I do try, especially when I was uh, working a normal 9 to 5 job, I, yeah, his, his snoring would keep me awake. And I guess he's really not a bad snorer. Uh, we live where there's a lot of owls and, and nocturnal birds. At night, and <laughs> we had a juvenile great horned owl on the property once, and those suckers are annoying. Great horned owls, when they're mature adults, are beautiful to get listen to at night. The juveniles sound like they're screaming. So that that would be, they even keep they even keep my husband awake sometimes. What's the last compliment you got? I don't really know because I don't, comp compliments make me uncomfortable. I, I was the, I was one of the kids got picked on a lot when I was in school and after a while it got a lot easier for me to say the horrible things to myself first. So that way when I got made fun of, it didn't hurt as bad. So now when I hear a compliment, it's very hard for me to, to believe it, to take it. it. Like It just makes it very awkward for me. So, I mean, I like getting compliments. I mean, who, who doesn't? But... 
Yeah, like my husband tells me I'm beautiful all the time, and I'm just like, mm, no. Glad you think so, but I can look in a mirror. And I'm not by by no means am I actually I'm trying to fish. No, I'm not trying to fish for compliments. They genuinely make me uncomfortable. Um, simply because I've listened to myself tell myself that. Know, whatever flaw I can find, that's that's what I focus on. Because if somebody else notices the flaw and points it out to me, it's a lot harder to hear from somebody else. It's easier to hear it from myself first, if that makes sense. Do you usually remember your dreams in the morning? Sometimes. Um, I haven't really dreamt a lot, I feel like, as an adult. There, I've, There's some dreams that I had in childhood that I still remember very vividly to this day like oh man the flying dreams those were the best you always knew when you're gonna wake up because it couldn't fly anymore couldn't launch off the ground slowly settle back down I don't know when, I feel like I'm gonna be hitting out of frame here soon hmm. I'm gonna try not to shake you I'm gonna shift just well, maybe not. Can I move me? Ooh, that's a little better. I can't see my pipe for now. How many pairs of shoes do you currently own? I have no clue. Not because I have a ton, but because I have usually like a pair of shoes, a pair of tennis shoes that I like to wear. All the time. Um, I developed plantar fasciitis this um, past spring, so I've had to buy some orthopedic insoles and stuff like this. So I don't, I don't like changing shoes because um, it hurts my feet. How old were you when you found out that Santa wasn't real? I was very young. I don't remember exactly how old I was. I was able to read. So, but I was able to read when I was like, well, in, in first grade, when we went in for orientation, I read the, there was, they had our, our books all set out on our desks already. And I was able to read the entire book before we even started school. So I was, I was a pretty early reader. Um, but I recognized my mother's handwriting on the tags that said from Santa. So that's how I realized that there was indeed no Santa Claus. I, I actually, I think I was more disappointed to find out that the Easter bunny wasn't real <laughs> than I was that Santa wasn't real. I don't, I don't know why I would have thought another fictional or another mythical creature that comes and visits us at night would be any more real than Santa. But man, I was tore up when I found out the Easter Bunny wasn't real. Who is your best friend? It's, I know it's a little cliche, but my husband. My husband is absolutely my best friend. He and I were actually friends 17 years before we started dating. We met when I was 19 and he was 21. He just turned 21. And we worked at the same restaurant together. Um, that was back in 1999. And we're friends, you know, off and on throughout the years. We'd go several years and not even have a conversation. And then my space became a thing and you know we, we'd chat online every once in a while we had a couple of play dates when our kids were little um you know, he was married i was married to other people and um and we'd hang out every once in a while and we were just good friends for a long time and then um, when i was going through my divorce he had already been divorced for quite a few years um when i was going through my divorce he was Kind of my 
my anchor going through that. And after my divorce, we kind of realized that maybe we should have just been together this entire time. I mean, I would never wish my kids away. They were the best thing that happened to me for sure um, while I was in that relationship. Um, but, you know, as our friendship grew stronger and we got to know each other even better, it was, it was just one of those, uh, realized we were kind of soulmates. So yeah, he's my, he's my bestie. Now I have, I have other really good friends, um, but nobody that's physically close to me, unfortunately. Not that I can, like, go hang out with, go have coffee with, go, you know, girls' night out or whatever. So, but, yeah, my husband. Who is your favorite actor, actress, and celebrity? Do not have one. I don't watch TV. I, I watch movies every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a favorite of those people's kinds of people's. What is the best birthday gift you have received? Mm, when my husband and I were dating, my husband now and I were dating, my birthday present for several years where he would tell me to pick a direction and I would say north, south, east, or west and he would pick a destination um, to go to in that direction for my birthday and the year I said south he took me to the Biltmore Estate um, down on Ashland, Ashland, North Carolina. Love that place. It is absolutely a mm, symbol of <laughs> excess and capitalism, for sure. Hang on, I gotta check something on my chart. It cut off in the middle of my square on the page and I wanted to make sure I wasn't miscounting. Uh, I had been there once with my aunt and uncle years and years and years ago. Um, I just, it, I, just in awe over what they had put into that, that house. I want to go back someday and do the the tour the i don't remember what they call but like the butler tour or something where you you actually kind of go through all the, the back rooms that they've got cleaned up but not necessarily open to the public uh where are we going Four. Yeah, I actually had fallen asleep when we, I don't, I don't do car rides very well. I get really motion sick, so I tend to sleep for a lot of the rides. I very rarely make it out of Ohio. My husband's always, it's like, it's a miracle if I don't fall asleep in the car half an hour after we've left. I don't think I put that in the right spot. Sorry, the struggle is real with these tiny little squares. I love 28 count, but man, they're little. And sometimes kind of hard to count. This is only the second time I've used the easy grid. I think I like it when I grid the fabric a little better, where it's a like a page break instead of where the square is the break because I confuse myself as to which one is my start square and which one 
is in the next square, if that makes sense. What's your eye color? I have gray eyes. Um, I always thought it would be, I always thought I had really boring eyes because I wear glasses that are Coke bottles. So I couldn't really see them when I looked in the mirror. And then when I got contacts, I could see that they were kind of gray. So they're like, they're like storm clouds. What were you dressed as for Halloween last year? Absolutely nothing, because 2020 was last year and nobody went anywhere. We did not do trick-or-treating for Halloween for the kids at all. Um, our, olders, our, our teenagers were old enough to understand what was going on and that they didn't need to go around. Hi. I don't know if you can hear the cat came down to visit me. Um, but we decided it would definitely be better not to go house to house last year. But I do, I love dressing up when I get a chance. My favorite is going as a skeleton because I, I can do a pretty, pretty decent makeup when it comes to a skull face. We went to a party one year after I dressed up like that and nobody recognized me. I mean, that's the point, right? But, like, they really didn't recognize me. What would be on your perfect slice of pizza? I love pineapple on my pizza. I said it. Fight me. <laughs> I know. People, it's like a love-hate relationship with, if you love, either you love pineapple on your pizza or it's the it's like blasphemy to put it on your pizza. I, and I love anchovies. I will put pineapple and anchovies on my pizza at the same time. So black olives, bacon, or ham. And I actually really like the, um, cinnamon on that kind of pizza too. Let's see. What would you eat every day if you could? Sushi. Hands down, I love sushi. And being in a landlocked, pretty much a landlocked state, the sushi that we get is probably not the greatest quality. Um, my oldest is in Girl Scouts, and there is a trip to Japan planned for 2023. I am totally going home. I, I cannot wait just so that I can eat real sushi. Um, what would you eat? No, um, what is the one item you cannot leave home without? Cell phone. Because aren't we all, you know, digitally connected everywhere? But it's my it's my navigation, and I don't do well with unless I've driven it fifty times. I don't I don't find things very well. Oops, time to frog. So yeah, if I forget my phone, I'm completely out of sorts. I don't know what time it is because I can't wear watches. My skin's really, really, really sensitive. Um, so, like, unless it would be a Rolex, I, or certain, you know, um, yeah, I, I couldn't, I can't wear them. I get really bad hives and rashes. Come on. I can't see it. It's like, really, you don't, that's not your home. Get out of there. Put 
is re-threaded. Ah, I see what happened. Whoa, whoa, oh, sorry. Shaky, shaky. Stop. Close your eyes. Okay. That's, this is the only thing I don't like about even weave. Is that it's really easy to slip the stitches. You have to be really careful about where your needle's going in or it'll slide underneath the, the strands. I'm probably not telling you guys anything you don't know already. But this is the first time I've used even weave as a one over one. No, I'm sorry. Lied. Did I say second? Yeah, second time. I'm definitely still getting used to it. What would you want your last meal to be? Sushi. A pile of it. What was the last book that you read? I don't remember the <laughs> names. I don't remember the names, name of the title. I do remember the author because he's one of my favorites, but Glenn Cook wrote the Black Company series. And my son will be four in February. And the last book I read was while I was on maternity leave with him. It was like the second to the last book in the series. And that is the last book I was able to read. Partly is just because I don't have the attention span for it now. Uh, I choose to use my time differently than reading at the moment. Because um, when I'm done working for the day, my brain's just my brain's just too fried to be able to read it to to be able to read for any length of time. Not that my job is hard. Um, I sew for a living, basically. But it, it does take a lot of concentration, what I do. What was the last date you went on? Mm. Well, would have been with my husband obviously but I I don't remember the last time we went out like on a date together we've been building our business since 20 but just before 2017 we got our LLC in 2017 and it's been pretty, pretty workload heavy. So we don't, we don't take a lot of time to just go out and have a date. Plus, you know, COVID. Mm -mm. What month were you born in? I was born in September. Let me get my next thread here, actually. I'm going to pause because I have to mark off and then highlight my next section because it's paper. Hang on. Okay. What is your worst subject? Well, I kind of already said that was foreign language. My most hated subject, though, is history. Which, I know, I know, if you, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. But I just, names, dates, you guys, I can't. I can't remember names, I can't remember dates. So, maybe, actually, maybe, maybe... History was my worst subject because I can't remember names or dates. It could also be why I'm bad at foreign languages too, because it's just, I'm just not good at learning 
new words like that and remembering them. Science and math, though. That was all about the math. I get really rusty on really easily. I'm a little bit dyslexic when it comes to numbers, so they don't they don't hold still in my head. But definitely, I have to have paper, pencil, do notes. Um, but geometry, trigonometry, I was my I drove my math professor crazy in my trig class in um, college because I would sit in the back and I wasn't trying to be rude, but I would fall asleep every class. I could not help myself. His voice was just, there was no participation. I, I cannot do classes where there's no active participation. It puts me to sleep. So, and he, he would, um, he would call on me and I think it irritated him that I could get whatever answer he needed even though I had been asleep two seconds before. And I, I, I don't think I got less than a hundred on any of my, on any of my, my tests. And usually it was above cause they always had extra credit and I'd always do the extra credit cause I, I enjoyed math. But now that's been, almost 10 years since I've been in college and now our kids are in, you know, a little bit higher math and I feel really bad because I, I did well while I was doing it in school, but I don't remember enough to help answer their questions without going back and reviewing everything again. So I do what I can, but I'm not very good at, at helping, unfortunately. What is your zodiac sign? I am a Virgo. I, I don't do a whole lot of the... I don't subscribe necessarily to, to it, but I, I've always had fun with it. Um, and I do match a lot of the personality traits that it talks about. But I was also very close to uh, being a Libra. So, um, yeah, here we go. What is the worst movie that you have ever seen? <laughs> My friends and I, in, I don't know, eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, went to go see Toys with Robin Williams. Now, that was not a movie for kids. We had no idea what was going on. We spent most of the movie throwing Skittles at the couples making out in front of us because it was, it was awful. Now I'm sure if I watch, I don't know, maybe if I watched it again as an adult, it would be different, but I just remember it being that it was awful. I think my, as an adult, the worst movie I've ever seen was a clockwork orange. I hated that movie. It made me sick to my stomach. Just no. Zero out of ten would recommend. <laughs> Do you prefer to be friends with boys, girls, or boys? It doesn't matter to me. I don't like drama. Um, I try to stay away from it. Um, my, my requirements are, are to be a kind human. I love everybody, <laughs> so it, it's it's very rare for me to find somebody that I'm like, yeah, no, I, I would not be. Well, take that back. I have met several humans lately that I would definitely prefer not to be in the company of. I try to see people's perspectives from from their side of it, from their perspective. That didn't make any sense. You know, I think you know what I'm trying to say. But um, I will give anybody a chance. Let's put it that way. I will give you 
And it doesn't matter if somebody else said you're a horrible person. I will let you prove to me that you are either a horrible person yourself or if there was a misunderstanding between you and whoever said you were a horrible person. But I will let you, I will make my own decision on that. But it doesn't matter to me if you are male or female. Don't be an awful human. Can you commit to one person? Absolutely. How often do you listen to music? Probably not as often as I'd, I'd like to. Um, with having the little one in the house, it's kind of hard to just tune out mu or tune yeah tune out the world and listen to music. But oh, several times a week at least. But let, honestly, I'd prefer to stick YouTube in. Mm -hmm. Okay, count. Okay. Kudos to the people who can just look in a square and know where they're at. That is not me. What are you doing? Okay. How do you turn out the world? Earbuds are my friend. I stick those earphones in and I will turn on some YouTube and the world goes away. Um, since I'm at my house 24 seven, it seems, and my husband and I work together and we have five kids between us. If everybody's under the same roof, um, I'm very much an introvert when it comes to people. I, it's, it, it kind of, some people get recharged by being around people. Some people are drained by being around people. I am definitely of the draining type. Um, so if I've had, Especially noise. I don't. I can't do a lot of noise for a long, long period of time. Um, or at least the the chaos noise. And with a bunch of teenagers, it can be pretty chaotic. And my little one is a Jabberwocky. So man, that kid can he he hits the floor running and does not stop talking until he his head hits the pillow. Sometimes I'm like, I love you, little man. You've got to be quiet. Mama needs some quiet. So if I need other adult conversation, I will put the headphones in, put on YouTube, put on YouTube, and that is how I drown out the world. Hmm. Are you a social or antisocial person? I can be social. Um... But like I said, it, it takes a whole lot out of me. I feel pretty drained after any kind of like social gatherings or parties or whatnot. Not that I mind people. I just, I'm not, not super social. How did you get over your last heartbreak? I got a divorce. It's that simple. I got a divorce. Are you good at hiding your feelings? Not really. Sometimes. But um, I internalize for a while as much as possible, and that's never good because then it usually just boils over when I've had enough. And then you get all my feelings all at once. So I, I try not to do that. I, my husband's pretty good at reading me. So if I'm having a crap day, he'll, he'll make sure I'm okay. Mm 
Do you care if people talk badly about you? Yes, unfortunately. I have always been a people pleaser. I have tried to be. Um, and I'm not very good at it. Probably because you cannot please all of the people all the time. You can please some of the people some of the time. Excuse me, you can, you can please some people all of the time. Or you can please all of the people some of the time. You cannot please all of the people all the time. And I have had to remind myself of that a lot over the years. Um, I grew up feeling pretty unwanted. So it's, it's definitely a hard habit to break as far as do you want people to like you? Yeah, I'm just trying to be accepted. And I think that's part of the journey that I want to go on with this YouTube venture. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to see if this helps me find myself and helps me find some people that might be kind of like me out there that I don't have to pretend for. That would be nice. When was the last time you cried? Mm. Probably when my dad got hurt. Um, he was working at a gun range and a customer's gun jammed and he accidentally shot himself in the leg and it severed both his femoral artery and his vein and the only reason he survived I think was because he was a former paramedic and knew exactly what to do he knew he had blown his artery out when he as soon as he saw the blood and I'm sorry if this is a trigger for anybody I should have said something um but you know it, it it's what happened I went through it so um but he was rushed to the hospital that is near where I live um he lives about an hour from me and um, we didn't know for about seven hours if he was going to make it or not. And really, he was in ICU for almost a week. He was in the hospital for like six weeks. So it was, it was bad, but he survived. Um, thank goodness. But yeah, I, that was uh, 2018 when that happened. And that is probably the last time I cried. At least that, that wasn't just a movie or something. If you could change your eye color, what color would you pick? Sorry, shaking my stand. Uh, I would pick like sky blue. I love my absolute favorite color in the entire world is blue. Um, I mean, I love, I love all colors, but the blue is, blue makes me happy. Name something you have to do tomorrow. I am going to be a transportation company for teenagers going to homecoming. My middle has a date. My oldest has a date, but they're going to go, they've, they've been with their person for about a year now. So it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. We're, we're going to go to a dance. Woohoo. But my son, this is like, like classic homecoming date. And he's really excited. I'm really excited for him. And the girl he's going with is so sweet, super sweet. Got to meet her parents. Um, the last football game I went to, they're, they're both in marching band. And so, yeah, but I'm taking him and my oldest and one of my son's friends. And I'm going to go back and shuttle everybody around after the dance. So 
So that is what I'm doing tomorrow. And working once in between everything. And sleeping at some point. I'm... I have to be up at like 11. And I didn't, I didn't get up until 4.30 this afternoon. Because again, sleep is the enemy apparently at the moment. And I'm kind of on a third shift schedule. So I'm just like, alright, well I'll nap when I get tired before the thing we have to do at noon. Um, my oldest is doing a bridging ceremony for Girl Scouts. And we're hosting at our house. So I figured, well, if, if I can, I'll nap before everybody gets here. And then I'll try and nap after everybody leaves before we have to go do the dance thing. The dinner thing. And then probably collapse in bed at midnight tomorrow night. And that Maybe it'll get to be a normal human for a couple of days until it all gets lost to the angry sleep gods that don't like me. What is the craziest dare that you have ever done? I don't no, I don't think I really ever did any dares. Um, I was I was kind of a good kid. I was the kid that a quiet kid. I got decent grades. Um, my dad was a cop, so I definitely didn't want to do anything really stupid when I was a kid. And he knew everybody, so I felt like everybody would tell on me <laughs> if I did something really stupid. So I made sure not to do. Any kind of dares that were, you know, that and let's let's be real, playing like truth or dare something requires that you know you have a social circle to play truth or dare with, and that was not me. Okay. The meaning of your YouTube name, no meaning really. Like I said, it's just a screen name that I made up a long time ago, and I like it, so that's what I'm going by. And I'm not super clever, so I, I couldn't really think of anything else to change it to. If your personality is an animal, what animal are you? Well, I'm not very good at self-evaluating my personality. Um, but my favorite animal is a horse. And if I could be a horse, I would. So running free. Okay, like a wild horse. I would want to be like a wild Mustang or something. Or a unicorn, so I could stab people with my head. <laughs> um, Alright, well that was the end of the tag. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. Oh, we're almost in an hour, so um, that might just be my standard. So if any of you are actually still here listening to me jabber jabber on, I really, really appreciate you stopping in, um, tuning in showing your support. Um, feel free to join me in the future. And oop, what am I doing? I'm trying to talk and it's not working. I'm stitching at the same time. I'm honestly surprised I got more than two stitches in because I was not sure how talking and doing this was going to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if, uh, if you care to, feel free to hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe. Um, really hoping that this is something that I can continue doing and enjoy doing. I have some ideas in mind for a series, so stay tuned for that. Enjoy your journey. It's not necessarily always about the destination. Enjoy your journey. Take care, and I'll see you guys later.
bye.